So function closures or function values or uh, functions being dynamically created, they all mean the same thing. When you create a function dynamically, um, it return it retains a certain in, or, or it contains a certain internal state, right? We saw that when in homework two we did that example of um, functions as data structures, right? Uh, where we want to store somehow the state of the counter. And we can do that because when we return a lambda, it may capture parameters defined outside of it. Um, and this idea of where you have a, a, a runtime function that was allocated when you, you called it, right? You have a function that returns a, a new function. This idea of this new function or this instantiation of function, however you want to imagine it, uh, that always has a notion of some code and also some state, which is what are the va the values of the variables that were captured upon inv invocation or creation of this function, right? Um, this is known as a function closure or a function value, whereas value means uh, is related to you have a function declaration of lambda when you evaluate that lambda, you get a value, which is the declaration along with the instantiation of the various variables that have been declared. So kind of, let me show you this example. Okay, so here is um, a file that I open. And what I mean Let me just create a factory right really quickly. So factory of, of X, right? What X does, we can just call it a thunk. You know what a thunk is at this point. So if I do, um, actually just, oops, lambda. okay. So if I call factory of X, what that um, relates to is the same thing as I copy paste the body of the definition, right? And I pass uh, the number, oops, sorry, I pass 10 to it. We are replaced, where I replace, um, oh, sorry, I need the lambda outside, lambda x. Okay, and I pass 10 to it. So this is what I did, right? Because the this is a function definition, which is the same thing as a lambda, lambda of x that returns a lambda uh, without parameters, right? And the only thing I did, I copied the body, uh, I copied the function and I inlined it in the binding, right? So here is the, here's function factory. Uh, and if I pass a parameter to it, what that does is, so this would be step zero and this is step one. So here I have um, a function definition, right? But I'm calling it, right? And when I call it, I return the body of that function. So it would be this lambda without parameters. So what that does, it returns uh, lambda with 10. So of course, when you print this out, you'll see procedure, right? And here you will see procedure. Procedure. Right, um, record can't show you the the state of a lambda, so you, you just see three procedures. But what I want you to keep in mind is these all these three things are all equivalent. And basically, what I'm saying is that well, you can think of a of of uh, this value being returned here as a lambda where I, where I rewrote x by ten, right? Or you can think of it as a lambda that has x plus some x equals 10, right? So you have a notion of code and you have the instantiation of that code. And this pair is known as the closure, okay? And when you see function value, that's also what it means. So they're synonyms. It just means the runtime, the runtime value that results from evaluating a function declaration, right? So this is still a function declaration, 
but the runtime value is that the original function declaration plus um, you know all the bindings that are that have been captured by that declaration right so in this case when I perform this step right I replaced X by 10 right and you can think of it as you literally rewrite the lambda so that it has 10 there in the return value or you can think of it as uh, a pair and uh, the rewriting on the side okay and we will see actually in this module these two ideas uh, being contrasted what you've learned in the previous lesson was rewriting so the idea of where you when you evaluate a function you actually are uh, you know sorry when you evaluate a function application you actually go through the the body the body of the function and then you find and replace all the parameters and you replace them by the the arguments um, so that's kind of like a rewriting technique but we'll also see an, an instance where um, you carry a function but also all of the rewrites and lazily you don't perform them and again the the return is known as the closure okay so when you hear, hear about closure that's what we mean so again this is just a this is just the write-up of what i just said um and just a distinction so that you everything is clear when we say function declaration we mean the lambda the code that you write that has lambda when you see function definition it's the define which is syntactic sugar for a basic definition and a lambda um so one thing that is very important to be able to understand what is the closure right again the runtime notion so what is the closure of this you only know that at runtime right you only know that once this x is known right because this x is not closed so but but why how do, how do we know what are the values that are have been captured what are the variables that can capture anything so this is the no the idea of free variables so the idea is that if you analyze this code this x is not defined here right it's not a parameter it's not defined if you just look at this code by itself in isolation right if you look at it like this this code doesn't have any anything above it right assume this doesn't exist let me just comment it out so that we are 100 percent clear what i mean here is okay so this piece of code um has this x that is i don't know what this x is right it's defined outside of this somewhere it has to be defined somewhere because x currently i don't know what it is it's not defined here uh, so what is this x i don't know so this is going to be captured has to be captured to be able to to have at runtime so if you want to call this the only way to call this lambda is if this x is assigned to any value right so like in this case where it's defined in the outside of a lambda so this is known as a free variable because it's not um, if you go through all the code you know outside of it there's no definition of x so it's it's kind of like dangling there and these are known as free variables and there is a precise way of knowing what are free variables uh, which is if you have a piece of code and the definition can be can be um defined inductively definition defined but okay so this is a inductive definition or a recursive if you will so what i mean by this is if you have a if if my code um, is a variable then that variable is free right so in this case if i just have x and x is any the whole code i have to know x is not defined anywhere so x is free um, if i have um, lambda of x and then some body uh, what i know is that while the free variables are any free variables that are here in e minus so let's call this a function minus x right because x is defined in the parameters so it cannot be a free variable so you can think of it if i go through the body of the function and i have a set of free variables well x cannot be one of them right uh, and the other the other thing we can look at is if we have a function a function call and have a, a function and an argument well the free variables any free variables in f and any free variables in a right 
so this is just a recursive definition, right? So the free variables of a function application are the free variables of f plus free variables of a. Okay. This is what we're saying here. And this gives you the notion, so all the free variables will be captured um, with respect to the closure, right? So in this case, for this code, the only free variable is x, therefore, the runtime value of this function value has to have x assigned to something. So this is the formal definition of free variables. And finally, the idea of the environment, right? Where this, this pairs of variables and their var values, where are they created? And this is what we'll see uh, actually in more detail in the next module, but this is just, as a racket programmer, it's important to know where are where can variables be defined? Where can you have multiple definitions? Well, you can have um, whenever in the lambda body, right? You can do definitions there. You can also do it in your conditionals. So whenever you have a new conditional, you have a new environment. So you can define what this means is if you have a define here and you have a conditional, right? And if you do true. So this always works, right? True is like this. Um, then you can do another definition of 10, and this is fine. So you return it like so. Um, if you run this code, it works perfectly fine. And however, I do this it won't work right because it's redefinition so that's an error but this just shows you that in a conditional you have a new scope right so if I redefine x to be 20 that is completely fine because each branch def 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 uh, represents a new scope okay and therefore a new environment a new place where variable bindings can be assigned um, okay, so then finally what I'm showing here in this code is a very simple way of, of um, making all variables unique so it becomes pretty obvious what's going on. So in this case we have this code where I have a getter and this x can actually be thought of x of getter. So you can annotate it with getter colon x. Um, so in this case if I instantiate it with 3, you can think of it as the closure being uh, x equals 3 and also the pair lambda. I return getter x, right? Which is why this returns three. So this is just to give you an intuition of how variable bindings can be thought of um, at runtime when you're executing a piece of racket code. Um, so this is another another example just to show you that you know in racket variables can appear out of order. So if you do getter x, you're referring to has to be the root of x, so whatever is the environment uh, that holds the getter. And if I define it x after, that's fine. Uh, and if I define a new, if I have redefined x inside a, a conditional, that does not affect the root. So in this case, 10 still remains 10. Right? The, x, the value of x is still 10, even though I, I redefine. So this each branch is independent and, you know, separate from the outside, as you would in a function. Um, and then this is just uh, the other example I, I've already showed you before, in that's definitions in that uh, parameter is shadowed by any local definition. Uh, so this is a kind of like a puzzle, what do you think x is going to be if you're returning x, so this x returns does it refer to the outermost, or does it return to, refer to this x? Um, and try to run this and see what what will happen. Okay.